Hey there, welcome back everyone. Thanks so much for joining me here today on the channel. Hope everybody is doing well. Welcome new subscribers. Well today guys, we're gonna talk about hyper independence and how that is a sign of trauma in your past or present. <laughs> and also it can be a sign of childhood trauma as well as trauma uh, during the adult years. And we don't think of hyper independence as a sign of anything other than strength many times. So many times people look at someone who is hyper independent in life, and I'll describe what that is in a moment. And uh, we think they're just simply strong and independent people, that they are capable on their own. Or if it's a woman, many times we think, well, they must be a feminist if they're that independent. I get that a lot. And that's not true. It has to do with trauma, guys. It has to do with your childhood. It has to do with your experience that made you feel like you had no other choice than to be hyper-independent. And let's go over what those signs are of hyper-independence. Now, these are some of the signs of hyper-independence. And if you have others, you can put it in the comments below. And also let me know in the comments below if this is you. If you have become hyper-independent, or perhaps you always were because of childhood trauma, let me know in the comments. And if you see somebody like this, don't always assume that it's their choice. Don't always assume that they're trying to prove they're a feminist or they're trying to prove that they're so strong. Many times it's just the cards that were dealt to them, guys. It's just what life dealt to them and that people have let them down, the people that they have trusted and entrusted with things have let them down time and time again. So they see no other choice than to be hyper independent. So try not to judge. And, um, you know, there's things you can do if this is you or there's somebody close to you that is hyper independent and really has a hard time uh, delegating tasks to other people or asking for help. There's reasons for that. It's not just to prove how cool and strong they are. <laughs> oh no, it goes deep due to trauma. So have empathy, have compassion for those people. It's usually what's behind hyper independence, guys. And again, let's go into these signs of it. First of all, there's an inability to trust others. Well, of course, that comes from trusting people and having those people hurt you, cause you a lot of pain and loss and let you down. You tend to not put your hand on the fire anymore and allow it. You figure you're safer doing it by yourself, right? Well, that's how people who are hyper independent, that's how they think. Also, somebody with hyper independence might suffer from low self-esteem because when they did let other people in, um, it basically, uh, you know, they were basically devalued, suffered losses and uh, suffered greatly because of it. So, you know, they don't have the confidence anymore that they used to, to make the choices that they did. Or so they feel that way that, you know, their choices they made were wrong. Their self-esteem therefore has suffered. There's also an inability to ask for help, even when struggling. This is true in people who are hyper independent. Um, they usually can't come from families where they couldn't ask for anything, where they felt like a burden, where, you know, it was if you wanted something, you had to get it yourself. Uh, it could be a large family situation where, you know, parents were maxed out, didn't have any money. Or it was, uh, you know, the mentality that, again, everything you want or need is up to you. And the child had to grow up very, very early in life. They weren't allowed a childhood. They had to grow up and buy their own underwear by age 10, you know, that type of thing. So that can cause hyper independence in somebody for a lifetime being raised like that. So even if the uh, person who is hyper independent is struggling, they could be on the verge of homelessness, they probably won't ask for help. Because Another reason is when they did ask for help in the past, they were simply made fun of and mocked and uh, probably put in a worse situation than they were when they initially asked for the help. So to a lot of people who are hyper independent, it's like, no, I, you know, last time I, I reached out, I got burned and I was worse off than before I asked. So why humiliate myself and ask? I'll just do it myself. That's their mentality. There's also a feeling of being ashamed or useless if they do need to ask others for help. So there's some shame involved with asking for help with people who are hyper independent. And if you look at people from healthy families, they don't have a problem asking. If they were, you know, Susie Sunshine growing up in a family where everybody loved them and supported them and helped them with the career and paid for their college and supported them and invested in their businesses or whatever it was. I know families like that. It's, I'm in awe of that because that wasn't my situation. Um, then, you know, it's, uh, that's, you see that and it's, uh, it, it's very, very different than uh, the way the person who is hyper independent was raised. And um, 
you know, it, there's a feeling of shame if somebody has to ask for help. Because uh, when they did ask for help, it, it was just abused. They were abused or put down or, or made fun of, or perhaps it was thrown up in their face. Perhaps they had to beg and, and, and scovel and, and grumble for every little crumb that they had. And it's not worth it to them. They'd rather just do it themselves rather than be humiliated by somebody. So chances are in the past, somebody made it very difficult for them to ask for the smallest thing. And so therefore, they just don't anymore. There's also an inability to delegate tasks to others with people who are hyper independent. They feel like if they want something done, they got to do it themselves. And it's because when they did delegate to other people or put other people in charge of things, it went bad. It wasn't done at all. It wasn't done right. The person was lazy and just took them for granted or whatever. You know, it's your reputation. It's your work ethic. And so you just figure, why bother? I'm just going to do it myself. That's how a lot of hyper independent people think and, and a point that they get to when others have let them down when they delegated tasks or things to other people to do. They just don't do things the same way. Also, hyper independent people feel like they must make all their decisions alone. Um, and uh, it, it's hard because you've oscillate back and forth and you you overthink things because you know, you don't have any outside input. Hey, what do you think? You know, people who are not independent and have a good support system, you know, they can ask other people, hey, what would you do in this situation? What do you think? What do you think? Um, but to somebody who's hyper independent, it's just on their shoulders. And they feel like, well, if I make the wrong decision, I'm screwed, you know, I need to really get this right. So they tend to uh, really take each decision seriously, and they might take longer than others to, to come to a decision because it is a very serious thing. It's just them deciding it, and they got to get it right. Another thing that hyper-independent people deal with is the inability to express emotion, needs, or vulnerabilities. They just don't. You know, um, In the past, they've gotten made fun of when they showed their emotions, or emotions weren't allowed, their needs weren't allowed. They felt like a burden in their family growing up, or in a marriage, perhaps, or a relationship, that their needs didn't matter, their emotions didn't matter, they weren't heard. And... Um, you know, so they don't express their vulnerabilities either because the narcissist in a narcissist relationship with them probably exploited their vulnerabilities and used them against them. And this could be growing up in a family, this could be in a relationship, it could be at work, it could be in a friendship. But after your vulnerabilities are abused, you know, and used for the wrong purpose, and um, your emotions go unheard and your needs go unheard, and you're pretty much neglected and um, overlooked, you, you try not to express them anymore. You figure, what's the point? I'm not going to humiliate myself anymore. That's the way hyper-independent people think many times. Also, there's a feeling um, to and pressure to achieve and succeed without help from anyone else. It's a real heavy burden to say, I got to do this, and I don't have a support system. Hyper- Independent people do not have any support. They don't have anybody cheering them on, helping them, or even giving them a hug when they feel down. They're pretty much on their own. And it's 10 times harder to do anything and to accomplish anything by yourself um, because there's really no one there for your support, you mentally, financially, physically, everything. Um, you're pretty much your own, you're your own island, you know, doing everything. And it's a lot harder. You could become overwhelmed. And another sign here is that you take on more than you should and you're overwhelmed by work and commitments that's a sign as well because you really can't go to anybody you're taking on everything yourself you're head of household you're working your job you're handling uh everything business-wise uh you're trying to handle personal things as well and you know fix the car and do everything else you're going to do it, it's very overwhelming it's very overwhelming because there's nobody else you can delegate things to or so you feel if you're hyper independent. Also, there's a feeling like you're a burden to others and unworthy of others' support. Now, many times this comes from childhood, guys. A lot of you come from families where you weren't heard or seen or you were made fun of. You didn't have the support. You didn't have people cheering you on or believing in you at all. So you were you felt more like a burden. Like, when are you leaving? How come you're here? and like a non-family member rather than somebody who was supported and loved and cheered on. You were tolerated and not celebrated. And that's the difference between a hyper-independent person sometimes and someone who is loved and cherished and supported. That person who came from a healthy environment doesn't have a problem 
delegating tasks to other people or asking for help. They feel they're worth it. They feel they're worthy. They're part of the family. They deserve everything. They deserve a good spouse. They deserve a good relationship. They deserve help from other people. They can ask for financial help and they don't feel uh, weird or unworthy. They feel they deserve it because they grew up feeling that way. Well, if you're the scapegoat or if you grew up feeling unheard and your emotions didn't count and you were the outsider and you were mocked and laughed at and nobody supported your endeavors and you were basically treated like a burden growing up, uh, many times as an adult, you're going to see yourself as being a burden if you ask for something. You don't feel worthy of things. You don't feel worthy of asking for things in life. And, you know, you become very self-sufficient because you don't want to bother anyone because that's how you grew up. God forbid if you bother anyone, right? Totally different way of thinking than somebody who was the golden child or someone who grew up being the apple of their parents' eye, right? Very different. Also, uh, the hyper-independent one may appear to be unfriendly or withdrawn, but that's not the case. They're just skeptical of showing who they are to people because it usually wasn't received very well or they were treated different or mocked or made fun of just because, just because that's their persona. So it's not that they're withdrawn or unfriendly. That's what they may appear like to other people. Um, But when you're not given that love and appreciation growing up, when you're seen as the scapegoat, when you're treated like a burden, when you're tolerated and not celebrated your whole childhood, then you do grow up um, not really walking around cheery, smiley, slapping people on the back and and being gregarious. You're kind of wary. You're checking people out. You're afraid to show any anything of yourself because it wasn't well received. Um, and you're just more hesitant. You don't want to be hurt. You're thinking, is this person going to hurt me? Is this person going to accept me? And you just have a different vibe about you. The people read wrong. They may read it like you're snobby when actually you're just a little more withdrawn. So before you judge somebody, really get to know them. Don't assume that they're one way. When you don't know people, it says judge not and ye shall not be judged, right? Another sign is being socially isolated. People who are hyper-independent tend to self-isolate and tend to be socially isolated in many ways because they figure, well, what's the point? Other people had a different experience growing up. And other people had different experiences as an adult. They were actually appreciated, listened to, and and respected. Ooh, new concept, right? So your demeanor is going to be different if you are um, feeling socially isolated and if you're hyper-independent. It's usually because of trauma growing up, guys. Just recognize that. There's also going to be an inability to form or maintain close relationships. And that's because, God forbid, if they find out who you are, they're not going to like you, right? Or in the past, when you opened up who you were and what you were about, it was just mocked, made fun of, gossiped, looked at like strange. Um, People love to, you know, find out details about you only to make fun of them or expose them as strange or weird or whatever. Uh, And therefore, you, you really don't want to form close relationships anymore. I mean, what's the point if you were made fun of or seen as different or mocked or made fun of or or devalued. You know, you just really don't want to get close to anybody because of that. And along with that is another sign. There's an intense fear of disappointment and rejection. Yeah. You know, a new concept if somebody accepts you and cheers you on, right? That usually doesn't happen. Uh, There's always a fear that you're going to be disappointed once again, or if they find out what you're really like, again, it's going to be the whole scapegoat abuse in childhood all over again. So you tend to be hesitant. You don't really want to get close to people. Uh, There also may be another, this is another sign, a dislike of relying on others. Yeah, if you're hyper-independent, you're not going to like relying on others because they've let you down. They've let you down time and time again. And if this is from childhood trauma, um, you've been trained to rely on yourself. You've been trained that it's a sign of weakness to ask for things, that you're just supposed to have things automatically and grow up at age 10 and handle the world and toughen up and do things yourself and God forbid, don't ask for for anything. Now, a lot of you were children growing up in your home and you couldn't ask for anything. You had to grow up really fast. You really didn't have a childhood. Some of you probably could have been caring for an adult, a parent or an older sibling or been the scapegoat and the narcissist was a parent or an older sibling 
And uh, you, you really weren't allowed to be a child. You weren't allowed to have feelings or be hurt. You weren't allowed to need anything. God forbid, right? That carries over into your adulthood, guys, and you will pick people that probably treat you the same way unless you recognize these signs and take the, the steps to acknowledge, you know, what you do deserve. Another sign would be uh, a lot of you could have symptoms of a mental health condition such as depression, anxiety, PTSD, OCD, or substance and alcohol abuse. Now, why? You don't have anywhere to go to, guys. You know, where's your sense of comfort? Who comforts you? Well, the Lord comforts you. We know that. And that's the solution. But for a lot of you, you know, it, it, it caused you to go into a deep depression and have anxiety over so many things you shouldn't have had anxiety over and uh, PTSD from trauma. And you didn't realize it was PTSD. You didn't realize that this substance abuse and anxiety, depression, etc., and isolation was due to trauma, childhood trauma. And being asked to grow up before your years, before your time, not being able to be comforted, not being able to, not, not being comforted, not being reassured, not being allowed to feel anything. So you numb it with alcohol or drugs or depression, anxiety, perhaps an eating disorder. All of those are signs of stress and hyper independence. In other words, um, stuffing your feelings down, trying to do everything yourself, not having an outlet to turn to for comfort. So you choose one of those things. That's the unhealthy way, guys. So I will tell you the healthier way in a moment. Now, there could also be thoughts of harming yourselves or others if you're hyper independent. Now, that's an extreme case, but um, sometimes the adversary gets through when you're by yourself and he tries to put those thoughts in your heads. So that's why you have to replace those thoughts with our Lord, with um, trying to acknowledge that you had trauma growing up and that you were probably asked to do more than the average person and have more on your shoulders than you should have had. And it wasn't your fault. You know, nobody can pick their upbringing, right? Nobody can pick their parents, so to speak. Um, and sometimes, you know, that's the family we grew up into. And it's, it's just recognizing that we have experienced trauma, that we had no affection or emotional support or very little, and that, you know, somewhere along the line, our needs, our basic needs, um, you know, weren't met as a child, and that um, we realize that we must take care of our own needs, and we can't rely on anyone else. That's really what hyper-independence is about. So, you know, as children, many of us felt responsible to care for not only ourselves, but sometimes other family members or the, our own finances. You know, we could have been seven years old and asked to buy our own underwear, you know, belongings <laughs> and, and necessities, like I said. And uh, a child shouldn't have to deal with that. You know, ch no, ch no child should have to deal with that. They should just be able to enjoy their childhood and be supported and be raised. You know, children are raised by parents, not children raising parents. Uh, so the child grows up thinking, and this is many of you, uh, that their needs won't be met by anyone, uh, that they'll be ignored or refused if they ask. So they just rely on themselves. And that's what starts the whole thing, really. So hyperindependence is a defense mechanism, and it's caused by trauma. And um, it's due to repeat disappointment and rejection, usually, guys. It's a trauma response, and uh, it's used for protection, like a lot of trauma responses. It's to protect yourself against further pain. It is a sign of post-traumatic stress disorder, and so many of you, have just shut out the world and said, you know, I have to do things myself. But just remember, you don't have to with God there. Seek God's counsel. Seek God's help. Seek blessings from God. Seek the kingdom first and see what happens in your life. So thanks so much for listening, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, if you need prayer, please put your prayer request in the comments, and I'll be sure to add you to my daily prayers. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one Christian guidance, please email me at angelhavenministry at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to write you back on how to do that. And please follow on Facebook, Twitter, Rumble, X, and Quora, guys. I may not have much on some of these platforms, but I'm trying here. And thanks so much. And if you feel blessed to uh, and so inclined to contribute to this ministry, um, it would help a great deal. Uh, hopefully this has been a blessing to you. If you find it a blessing, um, you know, there's ways to give underneath the video information through PayPal or, uh, cash app. 
and it helps the ministry to grow, helps me to promote the channel and pay for Zoom memberships to talk to people overseas, my phone bill, um, and also uh, making these thumbnails and things. There's so many apps that I need to buy with my own money online um, to be able to create this content. So it does help, and may God bless you for your generosity and bring you back tenfold for doing so. And I'll see you next time, guys. God bless.